Who doesn't love a good old highly unethical children's psychology experiment? I sure do. What if you could raise a child speaking only Klingon, or speaking no language at all? Or what if you could take a child from birth and raise them speaking English, but you change the meaning of every word? Once they grow up, will they ever be able to learn English? Sounds cool, right? Well, it turns out this is actually a terrible idea. Records of language deprivation experiments go back thousands of years, and I'm going to give the three most famous examples, all of which are most likely completely made up. Earliest is Egyptian pharaoh Tsamtik I, who wanted to test the hypothesis that the Egyptians were the original default humans. That's a good start, Samtik. The next logical step is to get two infants from the common folk and give them to a shepherd and give that shepherd very specific instructions like don't let them hear human speech and make sure they're drinking milk. The shepherd made sure they were drinking their milk for two years until one of them uttered their first word, Bekos. And since Bekos was the Phrygian word for bread, Phrygians lived here, read, not Egypt, Samtik confidently concluded that the Phrygians, not the Egyptians, were the primitive race. Bold, I like it. The second story takes place in the Holy Roman Empire, where Emperor Frederick II was, like Samtik, really into science. Like that one time he allegedly fed two men a huge feast, then sent one to bed and sent the other out to hunt to figure out which of these two activities resulted in better digestion, which he determined by having both of them disemboweled. Nice. Similarly, he performed language deprivation experiments where he bid foster mothers and nurses to suckle and bathe and wash the children, but in no wise to prattle or speak with them, for he would have learnt whether they would speak the Hebrew language, which had been the first, or Greek or Latin or Arabic or perchance the tongue of their parents of whom they had been born. But he laboured in vain, for the children could not live without clappings of the hands and gestures and gladness of countenance and blandishments. Salom Bene here is fairly critical of Frederick's experiment. His criticism has two parts. One where he points out intelligently that there are certain social acts that you can't keep from children unless you truly lock them in a box. And his second point is to gently remind the reader that Hebrew is the original language. Thank you, Salom Bene. Very cool. Most recently, James IV of Scotland gave two infants on a remote island to a deaf mute woman to see what would happen to the kids. Rumour is they could speak good Hebrew. All these stories share three big similarities. One, they all involve a leader willing to abuse their power for pseudoscientific gains. Two, they all run under the assumption that language is inherent to us, and that our most core language must also be the oldest, most original language. Three, these experiments not only lead to false conclusions, but the stories themselves are most likely completely made up. We sometimes romanticise unethical experiments as some sort of forbidden treasure, but these stories tell us how ridiculous that idea really is. Sure, these three experiments stunt the children's development and leave them with lasting irreparable trauma, but even worse than that, they're bad science. They're uncontrolled and were set up to reinforce existing prejudices. And even more, their stories constructed out of lies that serve to paint one culture as superior or one religious text as infallibly true. So maybe ignoring ethics and conducting your own experiments is a bad idea, just food for thought in case you were considering it. 